So you and I, we have brains that uh, probably see today's society as an alien civilization. Filled with comforts, you know, modern medicine is amazing, technology helping us do all sorts of things, but still this is all too foreign to our brains which are more used to the way of life of your ancient hunter-gatherer ancestors who lived more than 10,000 years years ago. So does that mean that you are more likely to have uh, mental disorders and are you less likely to be happy? Before we get to that, have we even had the chance to adapt to this very, very fast lifestyle? The speed with, with which natural selection operates will vary based on many factors. And there are some aspects of our neurology and our psychology which will have adapted very quickly. Um, to the changes in our lifestyles, there's some which may not have adapted this quickly. And importantly, there's some which were always flexible. So I had a chat with Dr. Nikhil Choudhury. He is an evolutionary anthropologist from the University of Cambridge. You can find the full interview below. It's very fascinating. And uh, he is someone who spent more than 10 years studying hunter-gatherers in Africa and Asia. So I mainly work with Bayaka hunter-gatherers who live in Congo. So they live in the rainforests of northern Congo. And my team generally works with that population. And then we also work with another population in the Philippines um, who are coastal hunter-gatherers. Known, they're known as the Agta. He also reviewed the subject of mental disorder mismatch between modern hunter-gatherers and weird humans you might be a weird human yourself weird stands for western educated industrialized rich and democratic humans and uh, right now there aren't that many studies that actually went into the field and looked into what kind of mental disorders hunter gatherers have and how often do they have those mental disorders but of the few studies that have been done on this subject there seems to be a trend and possibly, maybe, it is likely that uh, hunter-gatherers are less likely to have less mental disorders and are more likely to have better psychological well-being. We're going to need a lot more studies before, um, you know, having a definitive answer. The thing is, though, we do know that us, industrialized humans, we've abandoned certain behaviors from the time we were uh, living as hunter-gatherers and we adopted new behaviors and we know definitely that those new behaviors are causing mental distress and disorders and a lot of that has to do with uh, storing resources it turns out your fridge is a big problem hunter-gatherers are sometimes split into two categories which are simple and um, complex or immediate return and delayed return but most people a lot of the work is with immediate return hunter-gatherers and a lot of anthropologists think immediate return hunter-gatherers are more representative of our evolutionary history. Immediate return hunter-gatherers don't store resources like food. And for 95% of our evolutionary history, that's the way uh, we lived. Me and you. Well, not me and you, but our ancient ancestors. And your fridge, apparently, is responsible for social isolation both economic and political inequality, and sedentary lifestyle. If you have no storage mechanism, you can't get any inequality in wealth because there is no material wealth. There, there is no storage of resources or building up of harvests or ownership of land. So there's no economic inequality. And equally, everyone's so interdependent because everyone needs to share meat with each other. Even if I'm the best hunter, there are going to be some days I, I don't get food because there's just so much luck involved as well. So I rely on other people on those days to share meat with me. And as such, I can't rely on them. And then the next day be telling them, oh, I want you to do this. I'm your leader. I'm your boss. So you get political equality as well. And that's one thing. You only really find that in hunter-gatherers. And now we live with hierarchies either implicit or explicit. And that's not the only thing. How does storage cause loneliness, isolation? As uh, Dr. Nikhil mentioned, if you have a bad day and uh, you, you're not successful on your hunt or you don't get resources, 
another family is gonna help you out and what this has created is this group of 30 to 50 people who rely on each other so much that you never feel alone they have very very strong bonds with each other because they shared so social isolation is incredibly common in industrialized societies and perhaps it's good for me to to really isolate here weird societies industrialized societies in the east sometimes the societies are still very collectivist and this isn't as much of an issue but in the west um you see very common for people to be isolated chronic loneliness is a problem and a lack of social support is a major risk factor for almost every psychiatric disorder the hunter gatherers live communally, they live in camps. Social isolation just doesn't exist there, right? You just cannot, as a hunter-gatherer, you have to live in a group. If you live by yourself, you just won't survive for various reasons. Not storing resources, not having food all the time, also meant that you need to keep looking for resources and food. Has, have you ever met a hunter-gatherer who needed to exercise? Well, no, they, they all need to exercise, but they all do the exercise. So they're, they're fulfilling that need that all humans have. And they also do something that's uh, unimaginable to uh, many people living in industrialized societies. I haven't done this since high school, probably. They sleep synchronized with the sun without any artificial light. So if you look at the way we um, behave today, the new behaviors we adopted instead of the behaviors we used to have as hunter-gatherers back in the day, these behaviors that are causing us mental disorders today are summarized as the following. Inequality of any kind, whether that be social status or economic inequality, we're not exercising enough, we're not sleeping correctly, and um, more than anything, social isolation is so prevalent and that undoubtedly contributes to mental health risk. And these are just problems which we did not have in the past. Now, this doesn't mean that uh, hunter-gatherers don't have mental disorders. They do. In fact, they can be more susceptible to uh, certain mental disorders than you, someone who lives in an industrialized society. One of the few studies that has been done, and as I say, there's a real dearth of research into this, um, was on postpartum depression amongst the Hadza, who are a hunter-gatherer society from Tanzania. The sample size was incredibly small. It was only about 22 mothers or something. But they used this Edinburgh postnatal depression scale, which is used in lots of different, um, has been used in rural areas and in lots of countries. And they actually found a very high rate of postpartum depression scores on this scale amongst the Hadza. It's also important to understand that not all hunter-gatherers are the same. The things mentioned earlier, equality, no social isolation, higher physical activity, and uh, better sleep, these are commonalities you're going to find uh, across many hunter-gatherer communities, but still, you know, some live in different environments, they have different cultures, they have different stressors, and that can mean they can be more likely to have mental disorders than other hunter-gatherers and you. As you can see, there's a lot of nuance here, so I highly recommend you watch the full interview with Dr. Nikhil in the description. Lots of questions. What do hunter-gatherers do when they want to treat a mental disorder? Do they know what kind of mental disorders they even have? Do mental disorders have benefits? Uh, there is even some React content to uh, a couple of uh, Joe or Rogan clips. So, yeah, I'll see you there interview in the description thank you for watching so can i go to my uh, boss tomorrow and tell him i haven't evolved to have you in my life <laughs> you can say that your brain is not well adapted to well it's not i haven't evolved again I, i'm giving all these uh, i'm being put scientifically pedantic over haven't evolved but you can say that humans, for the vast, vast majority of our evolutionary history, we didn't have hierarchies. And as such, 
we have aversive responses to being subordinated. All right. I'll let you know if I get fired. Um, okay. <laughs> so I have one more clip and uh, one last question.